اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سو مس محمد وٹ ڈز دا حدیث ٹو تھری 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 ٹیلز یو It tells us that we shouldn't accumulate too much wealth and properties. Also, we should not worry about the future. Okay. And what about Hadith 2334? It tells us that our desires are always higher than life, so we can never fulfill all our desires. And what is Fitna? Fitna is temptation or anything that makes us neglectful in life. Our religion. Can halal and good things become fitna for you? Pardon? Can halal and good things become fitna for you? No. Yes. It, they can become fitna for you. Give me an example in which your education can become fitna for you. education like start maybe you are studying after studying all night then like uh, it's time to fast you say i won't fast because i studied um i didn't have that much time yes if you study late night then you will miss the fajr salah and during the exams if month of ramadan come you may find it difficult to study while fasting so many students don't fast in this case Worldly education has become fitna for you. What about job? Can your job become fitna for you? Yeah, the job, maybe you work um, full time and then you miss some salah. Yes, sometimes you miss your salah because of your job. So this means your job has become fitna for you. Can your parents become fitna for you? Yeah, your parents become fitna for you. Maybe they want you to study. Uh, until you finish your studies, then get married. So basically, they stop you from marriage, which is a halal thing. So when you ah. stop yourself from marriage, then this means it will become difficult for you to avoid adultery, especially if you are living in a non-Islamic society. So your parents has become fitna for you in this example. Can your children become fitna for you? Yes, they can, they can become fitna for you. Example? Example, because um, maybe you don't give them like uh, Islamic education more. And also sometimes to fulfill their need, people earn haram money. So in this case, the children become fitna. Okay. What is the biggest fitna for Muslims? The biggest fitna for Muslim is wealth. Any reference? According to Hadith 2336. Okay. And what does Hadith 2338? It means that it will always... Uh, uh, it means that uh, us we will always desire for long life and much wealth. Yes, a person always desire. for long age and too much wealth. So these are the two desires which are almost impossible to get rid of. Everyone wants these things. Even Muslims, everyone. A'udhu Billahi Ibn Shaitan Ar-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Today we'll study Quran, Inshallah, from Ayah 35 of Surah Nisa. Masha. Masha um, Muhammad. If you fear a bridge, a bridge between the twain, the man and his wife, appoint two arbitrators, one from his family and the other from hers. If they both wish for peace, Allah will cause their reconciliation. Indeed, Allah is ever all knower. well acquainted with all things in every relationship sometime the bad things happen that husband and wife start thinking about divorce so what shall be done when husband and wife start thinking about 
divorce. So we need to write this question here. What shall be done when husband and wife start thinking about divorce? So what shall be done when husband and wife start thinking about divorce? In the answer, you will write according to these according to Ayah thirty five of Surah Nisa. One arbitrator from husband family and one arbitrator from wife family. So these four person will sit together for reconciliation these person will sit together for reconciliation so listen the answer again one arbitrator from husband family and one arbitrator from wife family and these four persons will together sit for conciliation so one arbitrator from husband family one from wife family husband and wife these four person only nobody else if you bring too many person for reconciliation it will cause problems so only one person from husband family one from wife family and Together, these four person will try to reconciliate. Miss Halima. Muhammad. Yes. So what shall be done when husband and wife what start thinking about divorce? According to Ayah 35 of Surah Nisa, one arbitrator from husband family and one arbitrator from wife family and the four person together sit for reconciliation. Okay. Read the next one. Worship Allah and join none with him in worship and do good to parent kings kings for orphans al masakin the poor, the neighbor who is near for of kin, the neighbor who is a stranger, the companion by your side, the wayfarer you meet, and those slaves whom you your right hands possess. Verily Allah does not like such a, a proud and boastful. Boastful, okay. So, first Allah has right over you. After Allah, your parents have right over you. After parents, your kinsfolk, after kinsfolk, orphan have right upon you. After the orphans, the poor person have right upon you. After the poor person, the neighbor 
who whose house is Hello. next to you that person after neighbor then the second category of neighbor which house is not attached with your house then your companions then the person who is traveling on the same journey like in the aeroplane who is sitting next to you or in train who is sitting next to you then your slaves and servants so in this way in this order people have right upon you starting from Allah until the servants okay okay so for example let's suppose you have a you want to donate fifty dollars so you see one orphan children few orphan children and few poor people according to this chronic ayah you should give uh, this money first to the orphan people because orphan have more right then let's suppose you want to donate some money again maybe 25 dollars this time and this time you see one poor person and one neighbor person who who has some who has some need he is not neighbor is not poor but he has some need so in this case the masakin has the poor person has first right then let's suppose you want to gift something maybe you have made some delicious food and muslims often share food with their neighbors so there are two neighbor one neighbor house is right next to you attached with your house and one has some distance maybe after few houses he has house so the one who has the house right next to your house he deserves to be more he deserves more of your good things so you better give your food to this neighbor first okay in this way they have right upon you halima Muhammad. Those who are misery and enjoying miseryness on other men and hide what Allah has bestowed upon them of his bounties and we have prepared for the disbelievers a disgraceful torment. Read this hadith as well. Narrated Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said every day two angels come down from heaven and one of them says, O oh Allah, compensate every person who spends in your cause. And the angel and the other angel says, O oh Allah, destroy every miser. Sahih al Bukhari. What is miser? Volume 2 hadith. Miser. Miser means a person who accumulates money. He does not give any charity and he okay. does not spend anything on the relatives. He is a very greedy person who just accumulate, he tries to accumulate the wealth. So anyone who does not spend money on good things and try to accumulate everything with him, angels pray for him that may Allah destroy him. And the one who spent in Allah cause angel pray for him that may Allah compensate him. And Allah has prepared a for the disbeliever or disbeliever. So basically this Quranic ayah condemns the misery. We should not be miserable. We should spend money on good things. Our family, our relatives, poor people, orphan people, Neighbors, okay. So you better try to give something, maybe good food to your neighbors. Any question? I just want to tell you that in that um, I it says we we believe in Allah and then the with a parent and then the 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 kinsfolk the the kinsfolk are the one which are related by blood. 
So yes. maybe in my blood, in my uh, blood, they are orphans. Yes. And also in my in my uh, like maybe I stay in London. Also we have orphans here. Yes. So should the first priority will be me to give the orphan from my brother's side who died, or the orphans here from London who are like charity. According to this, I uh, and the orphan from your brother's side because they are more close to you in blood relation. So they have oh. first right of your good things. Okay, that's fine. Second right is other orphans. Okay. Shukran. Orphan. Now read this one. And also those who spend of their substance to be seen of men and believe not in Allah and the last day, they are the friends of shaitan. And whoever takes shaitan as an intimate, then what a dreadful intimate he has. So this disgraceful torment is also for those people who give charity only for show of purpose. So basically it means in today's world, you, we can say whenever you give charity, don't tell anyone. Don't make any pictures. Don't make any video. Don't upload it to your show, social media account. Just keep it secret with yourself. Okay? Yeah, okay. So, let us write this thing. One does... One does Aya thirty eight tells us what does Aya thirty eight tells us? So in the answer you will write if we spend on good things for show of then we will receive disgraceful torment from Allah. I will repeat the answer. If we spend For show off, if we spend for show off, then we will receive disgraceful torment. Read the question and the answer. What does Ayah 38 tells us? If we spend on good things for show sure off, then we will receive disgraceful torment from Allah. Okay. Next student, Nassim Koser. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sada. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam. Now read this 39 Ayah. Okay, Sada. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Valadina Yung Valadina Yung Figuna Amwala Ria Anna Ria Anna Ria Anna Tibala Yu Minu Villa. ولا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الآخر ومن يكون الشيطان شيطان له قرينا فساء قريب قرينا قرينا Is this your first time with us? Yes, other first time. In this class, basically, we focus on understanding Quran. Okay. So students usually have 
a notebook with them in which okay. they write questions and answers regarding our daily life. Okay, and Tana. in the next class, we ask the students about their answers. Okay. So now read this uh, ayah 39 in English language. No, Sada, I English, little English, I am Italia. Okay. Yes. No problem. L little English, little English, Sada. No problem, you can try. Okay, Sada. Sada, I am number 39, I, I can read? Yes. Wamaza alayhim law amanu billahi wa yawmil akhir wa anfiku wa anfaku wa anfaku wa anfaku mimma razak razakahumullah wa kana allahu bihim alayhim bihim alima Miss Muhammad. Yes, Azad. Miss Muhammad, uh, read this one. Okay. And what loss have they if they had believed in Allah and in the last day? And they spent and they spend out of what Allah has given them for sustenance. And Allah is ever all knower of them. So basically, this uh, is the uh, related to the previous ayah as well. We will don't need to write any question for this. It is uh, just tell uh, us that it is a total loss. They neither benefit in this life by spending money and neither they will have any reward in the next life. They will only have disgrace for torment for their show off. Okay. Now read the 40. Surely Allah wrongs not even of the weight of an atom or a small ant, but if but if there is any good done, he doubles it and gives him from him a great reward. This sign is basically for those people who blame Allah for all the bad things in this life. They say if Allah has created us, then why Allah has made the element of evil in us why everyone is doing evil thing Allah should have created only the good things among us inside us and why Allah will punish us in the next life for that is the answer to this blame Allah wrong is not even the weight of an atom so Allah has given us choice to do good or bad in this life and then Allah will do justice with all of us. Any question? Read the next one, 41 Aya. How will it be then when we bring from each nation a witness and we bring you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a witness against these people? So basically, at the day of judgment, people will blame their prophets for not conveying them the message of Allah. Every nation will blame their prophets so then for at that time Allah will bring for each nation a witness and also Allah will bring Prophet Muhammad as a witness for those prophets so when th these people from other nations will blame their prophet Prophet وسلم, will testify that that prophet has conveyed the message of Allah to his people they are telling a lie So that is Ayah 41. Today's students are also less. So we better stop here. And we will continue next time from here. We have written only two questions today. So do you have any question?
see you all next time inshallah ma'assalam inshallah ma'assalam jazakallahu khairan